folks and family, we are back here at section five of Oakland Cemetery. Uh, we have some work ahead of us. Uh, there's uh, basically, you'll see a PVC pipe off to your left. Um, and I'll go into a little description about that. But back to my left, or excuse me, back to your left, my right, uh, there are four stones. These all belong to infants. I'm going to read them off and um, just give you a general description. Uh, the first one is, uh, last name is God, uh, Godly, G-O-D-L-E-Y. Then you have Grant. After Grant, you have Oliver Haas, H-A-A-S. And then Betty Sprouse, S-P-R-O-U-S-E. This section of the cemetery had a lot of infants, so sometimes uh, we don't even know if uh, there's actually a gravestone there. Uh, sometimes it's just a marker. We found two individuals, H-A-A-S uh, and uh, the Sprouse Stone, a couple weeks ago. And then, um, based off the cemetery map, we found a Grant Stone uh, off to the side, so we actually put it in line in accordance with the cemetery map. So that was that, and then in the process of doing that, we know that there are two more stones that we see to our front. We are actually searching for three, but we only found two uh, infant stones that are right in front of us. And um, we will get back to you in the next cut for who they are. And our intention is basically to raise their stone level to the ground at a minimum. And then we'll also take a picture of it because under this tree, a lot of vegetation will grow on it. And over time, it will just get covered uh, under the ground as you see at time now. All right, we'll see you in a little bit. Folks, we're back uh, at section five. We have uh, two individuals that are in that are marked in front of us, and uh, we were hoping to find three. We know we couldn't find the third one, um, but what you're gonna see here in the next process um, is that Mr. Harmon and I were basically going to uncover the uh, mat, the, um, the grass plug, if you will, expose the stone, and then we'll set the stone close to the height of the ground and then uh, we'll level the ground out under the stone so that way all you see is the stone. And uh, if we have to clean the stone off, uh, we'll be ready for that and uh, we'll get to work. See, it might be another stone. Yeah, it might be. It might be the Wheeler stone, actually. I'm going to get the uh, probing to it.
it's on. All right, folks, um, back here at section five, we've somewhat leveled the stone. Uh, these are two individuals. Uh, we were searching for three, and uh, we actually found a foot marker for another yeah, stone, but unluckily, we did not find the third stone. But uh, the good part is, uh, the individual right here, I'll read the stones off, and then Mr. Stone and I, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Harmon and I, will get to cleaning. Uh, but it says, Baby Mesco, son of Mr. and Miss Mesco, uh, passed away in May 30, 1948. And the stone that Mr. Harmon's cleaning, uh, off to my right, is uh, Hilda Lou Roche, R-O-S-C-H-E, uh, born on March 23rd, passed away April 9th, uh, 1948. So we're gonna get to cleaning these stones and then uh, we'll do a final clip once we're done. Plenty of water we can clean her up. <coughs> Plus, it's supposed to rain, but tonight, in the uh, morning. tomorrow afternoon, yeah. or tomorrow morning until about 10 ish. Yeah. Conclusion here, it's that uh, section five. Um, to my left, I have baby Mesco, uh, who is the son of Mr. and Miss Mesco, and then um, Hilda Lou Roche, uh, who was born in March 23rd, passed away in April 9, 1948. Uh, these stones, at least as far as we know, there was never a picture of them, but they were on the cemetery map, so we used the cemetery map uh, surrounding cemetery stones to locate and identify. These two stones, uh, we'll still search out for a third stone. If we ever find it, uh, you know we're going to have a video of it. Uh, but basically, we raised the stones to uh, at least the level of the ground. And what we're going to do in the future, um, we just kind of um, dress it up to the side. We're going to take a picture of it, basically take a top view picture and then a perspective shot of the um, where the stones are. So that way, in the event it gets covered in the future, if a loved one... Uh, stops by to take a look at these stones and they're covered again then they'll be able to see them um, that pretty much concludes this section I know we kind of covered a lot if you have any questions or comments leave it in the comment section below give us a like and subscribe and we appreciate your support so family we're here at section 5 of Oakland Cemetery and uh, we're trying to uh, GPS map the cemetery and in the process of doing so there are some markers that had no pictures, but uh, they were confirmed on the cemetery map. And a ca complete case in point where you can't list every single name that's on there, uh, the name Hawkins, H-A-W-K-I-N-S, we're trying to look for two individuals, Elmer and Benjamin. And um, we ended up, uh, so the four stones that you see uh, to my left, those are the ones that were identified. And then, um, in the same area, we would assume that that's where the other two family members were. In the midst of probing the section, we basically used a, pr a probing tool. Uh, you'll see where the PVC pipe is uh, in front of me, uh, off to my uh, right. That is where we ended up finding a temporary marker. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't find a large uh, gravestone. We'll keep probing and looking for it in the future, but in the next cut, basically you'll see the temporary marker that we found. And instead of it being buried in the ground, what we're gonna do, we intend on, uh, we'll say if this is the level at the top of the ground and this is the temporary marker, we're gonna at least take the temporary marker up to the ground, 
ground level and then just fill in the dirt on the bottom so that way it doesn't get lost over time and then we'll end up taking like a top view picture as well as a perspective shot to at least identify where the marker is so that way in case someone looks for it in the future and uh, we're not here to point it out uh, they have some sort of a reference so we'll see you in the next cut folks back at here at uh, the Hawking site um, we know that there was a temporary marker here before what we're gonna do it was actually pretty far deep so we didn't just want to leave a hole in the ground so I'm just gonna uncover it and then we're gonna look at the uh, physical placement of that marker to see if we can work with uh, raising it up or not uh, the last thing we want to do is um, even though the intent is good to bring the marker up uh, we don't want to risk any damage to the marker uh, if anything we can document it and then call it a day but uh, we'll see what we can do and I'm gonna get to work Very careful because the way yeah. the letters pop out. You can, I think we, it's the orange one up against the wall. So I'm kind of going very slow around the temporary marker because you don't uh, imagine this being the top portion where you read all the letters and then you have the bottom portion which is backing it. Um, there's a chance that you can physically separate the plates and then all the lettering will kind of go everywhere. So just being very careful as we take the marker up. Alright folks, so uh, we have a intact marker and what I'm going to do is we're just going to kind of put the dirt back. Folks, we're back at uh, section 5, kind of at our conclusion for Mr. Benjamin F. Hawkins. Uh, it's pretty cool, middle name is Franklin, so Benjamin Franklin Hawkins. He was born in 1876, passed away in 1956, and his temporary marker was here and there was also a... Um, a photo request or there was a actual uh, memorial created for his um, sister Elmer or Elma we could not find her site but we assume that's gonna be somewhere in this area if we do find it we'll create a video for the next time but um, as of right now we have uh, mr. Benjamin Hawkins temporary marker raised up probably about six inches from where it was and just naturally it sunk over time what we're going to do here in the future is that if you have any ideas as far as how to keep a temporary marker preserved, we even thought about maybe placing it in a concrete template, a flat stone, and then or even putting a piece of plexiglass over the top to give it uh, better preservation and visibility over time. That's just something we can consider. But feel free to leave any comments in the section below, any suggestions. We're always open to that. But other than that, Mr. Hawking's site is um, up to the ground. And we're going to continue on here at Oakland Cemetery. But uh, if you have any questions or comments, give us a uh, leave it in the section below. Give us a like and subscribe, and we appreciate your support.